If you were to ask any 3D artists about the best industry standard software, it's highly probable that they would mention Autodesk Maya. So how come animation studios don't use it? That's right, unlike popular belief, big studios like Pixar, Disney Animation Studios, DreamWorks and so on are not big fans of the software. Don't get me wrong though. Some artists inside these studios may or may not use it, but it is not their main 3D animation package. Let's take Pixar for example. They use a 3D animation software called Presto, which is capable of doing amazing stuff. And for rendering, they don't use Arnold, Redshift or V-Ray. Instead, they use a powerful render engine called RenderMan, which is now open sourced. DreamWorks also have a 3D animation software called Primo, which is very impressive because they used it to make all of their feature animated films. And they also have Moonray, which is a great render engine that was open source for the public too. So why is this the case? Why big animation studios go through the hassle of creating a new animation software which is incredibly complex? And why don't they just use Maya? Before we continue, I wanted to let you know guys, especially Maya users, if you need Maya plugins and scripts for modeling, retopology, rigging, animation, rendering, you name it, you will find a list of the best stuff in the description of this video. For example, for retopology, you can use a plugin like Zrail that allows you to create polygons on sculpted surfaces in a beautiful way. And if you want to do some hard surface modeling, you can take a look at plugins like Mod It, Plug It, and Stamp It, which will allow you to create complex hard surface models like robots, weapons, or anything else of this kind. For animation, I highly recommend the Pavel Barnav animation scripts because they are just amazing, and they are used by many VFX and game development studios. For simulation and effects, you can use some of the best tools like FumeFX, for fire, smoke, and explosions, pull down it for destruction effects, and ornatrix for hair and fur. So I highly recommend you check out these tools because it will save you a ton of time and headaches, but it will also support this channel. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Here's the thing. Animation is a powerful medium because it has the ability to trigger powerful emotions from the viewers, such as happiness, sorrow, and fear, as well as the ability to connect and engage with us on a very deep level. The idea is that achieving these feelings is what makes a good animation, and animation studios understand this really well, but commercial software like Maya sometimes may not always be able to provide that, at least what these studios want. But the bigger problem for animation studios is that Autodesk try to appeal to a broad range of clients by offering general features that everybody wants. As, as far as I know, studios like Pixar can't simply call Autodesk each time to ask them to add some features to the software. But interestingly enough, this issue can be solved with open source software like Blender, despite the fact that it is not industry standard. So, the alternative these studios usually pick is developing their own tools and 3D animation software, which are precisely designed with the ability to customize them to fit their precise needs. For example, Pixar faced a unique challenge in the creation of their iconic movie The Incredibles. Because their in-house tool known as Marionette couldn't initially stretch models the way they needed to bring the Elastic Girl character to life. If it were Maya, there wasn't much they could do about it. But since they had a complete control over the software, they developed a new version of it and they were able to add that feature. So one of the biggest drawbacks for these big animation studios when using a program like Maya is its closed source nature. This means that developers are left without the ability to modify the source code to suit their specific needs. And they are only left with the option to develop add-ons for it. In fact, the majority of studios that use Maya, especially professionally in the industry, they all use a customized version of it with an ecosystem of extra tools around it, rather than using the basic build or the vanilla version if you will. Another interesting factor is that the use of in-house software allows studios to eliminate unnecessary features that can slow down the animation process, 
by making their tools only include what is essential for their specific projects. This means that it will make the software run better and avoid potential crashes and extra working hours that come with it, which the studios often have to pay for. However, this raises an interesting question about the future of the software development in creative industries and whether the closed nature of a lot of software in the market could be the reason for more studios relying on creating their own software or maybe creating more competition in the CGI industries. And this is what we're gonna talk about next. Steve Jobs once said, Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. And it is a philosophy a lot of big animation studios adopt, including Pixar, the studio that Steve Jobs once owned. So basically animation is a form of art that requires creativity, skill, and passion. But it also involves innovation. However, if you use the same technology that everyone is using, you may not stand out in what is already a very competitive market. For example, in the movie Brave, Disney created an entire software called Taz Hair, just for the hair of Princess Merida as it is a very important part of the design and one of the most expressive elements of the character. And this, for instance, is a way for a studio to stand out by having superior hat technology and making their production more attractive. On the other hand, Autodesk, for example, has a reputation for taking a lot of time to address the bugs or other problems with the software, leading to unexpected extra costs that can impact the studio's financial stability, like we have seen with the recent controversy of Unity licensing change, and changes in prices and so on, which has generated a lot of backlash. On the other side, developing proprietary software can have a lot of advantages. First, it gives studios more control and autonomy over the creation and maintenance of their software because they can communicate directly with the developers and request support and updates that suit their specific needs and preferences. So this can help them avoid potential problems or conflicts that can arise from using Maya or dealing with Onodesk. To be fair, Onodesk also offers support, but I would say it is on minor issues and technical stuff but not creating new features and tools that are gonna be integrated natively into the software. Also, what is important to be aware of is that some studios have spent a lot of time and effort, sometimes even decades, to create their own software ecosystems that can suit their specific needs and goals. For example, what a digital has developed an impressive arsenal of tools that no other software can match, such as Manuka, Facet, Tissue, and many others. This means that the studios have created their own unique technology as we have previously mentioned, and it does not make sense for them to give up all that for another software. But ironically, sometimes they do, which gonna talk about in another video. Additionally, there are also other reasons why switching can be expensive and disruptive to their workflow. First, they would need to teach their whole team how to use a new software, which can cost them a lot of time and effort. And while they are learning Maya, they may not be able to work as fast and as well as before, which can mess up their project schedules and budgets. Me personally, I think that Maya is more than enough to work on any animation projects, especially if you are not a huge animation studio, like Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, and so on. Generally speaking, the decision of animation studios to use or not use Maya is a complex topic, and it is driven by a variety of factors, each linked with the pursuit of creative excellence and flexibility, in addition to revenue and protection of their assets. However, it's important to mention that Maya is still one of the best capable software in the animation industry. In fact, it is considered the best among commercial software. But animation studios often have a lot of things to consider before picking a software because technical capabilities, the tools and the features aren't everything, since the animation industry is a business after all. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.